Hi, I'm Naomi Nachman, and this is Sunny Side Up. I'd like to introduce everyone to my good friend Jordana Herschel. She's the COO of Masbia and she's also a personal chef, otherwise known as the Blue Ladle. Yes. We have been cooking together for a very long time. Very long time. And I'm very excited to have you on the show. Tell us a little bit about the work that you do for Masbia. So I've been working for Masbia since December. I am their chief operating officer and we've been working on a really exciting new fundraiser and that's really what we've been focusing on now. And for anyone who doesn't know what Maspia is, could you tell us a little bit about Maspia? Sure, so Maspia is a network of food pantries and soup kitchens that are 100% kosher. And we pride ourselves on making sure that we feed anyone in need and with dignity. So we wanna make sure that we're not just slopping some food on a plate for somebody, that we're feeding them. I think People Magazine referred to it as a restaurant without a cash register. I love that, I remember when that quote came out, I was so proud that must be just such high quality kosher food for people in need. Okay, so tell us about what we've got in front of us right here. So we're working on a fabulous fundraiser where we are working with the Chef's Garden, which is a farm out in Huron, Ohio, who makes fabulous, fabulous produce. They work so hard to make sure that their produce is the exact color and texture and flavor for what the top chefs would really want. Look how gorgeous these colors are, all made by Hashem. It's, it's beautiful what they can produce. And they made this fabulous cookbook called the Chef's Garden Cookbook, which we have over here. I'm gonna hold it up, I'm gonna grab my copy. <laughs> So the chef's garden. This is like I've got. This is like an encyclopedia. It of, is. It's actually of vegetables. It's actually broken down by types of vegetables. So they explain all the different vegetables in here, and all of the um, recipes are really veggie centric, which are amazing for anyone who's into plant based or just gardening or anything like that. Or love vegetables. People are so, especially this past year, a lot of people have been doing a lot of gardening. Yes. And this book was a really great reference and they're beautiful pictures. They're in here. stunning. So Farmer Lee Jones, who's the farm, the farmer out in Huron, he worked to make this book along with Chef Jamie Simpson and they have been big supporters of Maspia and they send us produce and they've- So generous. We have they... worked directly with them, both Alexander Rappaport, our executive director, and Farmer Lee Jones have worked together for many years to really help feed the needy with dignity. And he came out with this book this year and we wanted to do a fundraiser with him, but we were concerned because while it is a ve very veggie centric book, there are some recipes that aren't 100% kosher. So we are kosher firing them for you. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I was talking to the chef in the farm and I told him, we're gonna kosher the recipes. So that's what we're doing, we kosher the recipes. So what we did was we took whatever recipes were in here, I scanned through this entire book of 641 pages and picked wow. out the recipes that were in kosher and along with um, Josh Masson, who is the chef at Naruto Bolantinek and Brian Greika, who is the chef at Milt's Barbecue for the Perplexed in Chicago, they helped me make this book of kosher swaps for any recipe that isn't kosher from the it's chef's It's so garden nice that we have such a book available to us and they went out there, they did a photo shoot, look at Alex Rappaport sitting in the, uh, He's on the tractor, in the tractor a, along with Farmer Lee Jones. You can sort of see underneath his beard, he's actually wearing Farmer Lee Jones gave him a, a matching but, bow tie. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> you can kind of make it out underneath. <laughs> and it is a beautiful, beautiful book filled with recipes from the chef's garden that have been Kosher-fied. Yep. It, we spent three days on the farm really trying to understand all the recipes in the book, what the meaning behind the recipes were, what their intention was. I sat with the chef, Chef Jamie Simpson, who wrote the recipes. I got the background to the focus of every recipe. So for example, one of the recipes that wasn't kosher was a Cornish game hen that had an onion caramel on it. And it was beautiful, but it was dairy. But his intention was about the vegetable, the onion, not the Cornish game hen, so we made it into a butternut squash recipe with an onion caramel. So it was really about meeting the with the chef and finding out what his intention was and us working to make it kosher from there. And the recipe for that butternut squash is with a caramel here. sauce is here. It's fabulous. And today we are cooking some delicious smoky tomato soup. Tomato. 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 Whatever. Tomato. Let's get cooking. Yes. All right. All right, what do we have to do first? This looks amazing. So I, it's a, it's a smoky this. tomato soup. And so Ooh. to get the smoky flavor, in fact, in the book, 
for anyone who, who gets the book, there's a meat version of the soup and a dairy version of the soup. Oh, for a vegetarian. Or for kosher reasons, if you wanted to have a dairy meal, whether it was for Shavuot or if it's for a day that you particularly like dairy. My family eats dairy on some other holidays. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a great option. So we have two different ways of, of making it. We could either make it meat or dairy. So okay. we're gonna make the meat version of the smoky tomato soup. Okay, so let's get our Let's pan. get it good and hot. We wanna get our pan really hot. So yes, we wanna get it screaming hot because we're gonna get that smoky flavor from it calls for bacon, so we're gonna be using bacon, or you can use beef fry. We're using beef fry today, and it gives it a good smoky flavor. It's a fabulous replacement anytime someone is looking for a smoky flavor that normally would come from bacon. Okay, and it's kosher. But this is kosher because it's made from beef, hence the beef fry of the beef. Okay. So we're gonna put it in a dry pan because the amount of fat that's in beef fry is gonna render down, and it's gonna give us all the fat we need. So can I start? Go for it, let it in. Ah, oh, look at that sound. Yeah. We always talk about the sizzle. The sizzle's fabulous. So oh, when you cook right beef away, fry it's down, screaming hot. and it's going to splatter, so just be careful a little bit when it's that hot. Keep my dress clean? Yes. Okay, am I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to want to render down some of that fat. What does rendering down mean? Rendering down is when we cook the meat and the fat comes out of it. So we're going to be cooking the meat in its own fat, basically. It's going to fry in, a, in of itself. So we're basically frying it in its own fat. And then when that fat comes out, we're gonna use it to saute up our aromatics, which in this case are onions and garlic. Mm, sounds great. So this recipe is, generally most of the recipes are very seasonal, so it's about what's growing. But we wanted to highlight some vegetables that aren't necessarily seasonal, because in the winter, there's less available. So sometimes there's squash, potatoes, certain things that you're able to hold on to. And tomatoes are something that people love to eat all year round, but aren't delicious all year round. I love tomatoes. I love tomatoes. <laughs> so we've got some right here, which I can. So right, if you have in the summer when your veggies are fresh and delicious, if you can or you jar your own, that's amazing and fabulous. If not, if you find a really great product that you like, a canned version is very good. So, but the whole tomatoes are really where the best quality is. So you should not use crushed tomato or tomato right. sauce. So you, you want really want, whole. you get more tomato flavor when you get the whole tomato. So now that the fat has been rendering and we have a whole, I see all that fat that came out, the beef fry is getting crispy and the fats come out and we're gonna use that fat to saute up our aromatics. Okay. So we're gonna throw in some onions and some garlic. And we're gonna saute that up inside this fat until they get a little bit soft. And then we'll see from there. Once the onions and garlic soften, we're gonna add some flour. Now what the flour is gonna do is it's gonna mix in with the fat from the beef fry and it's gonna create a roux. Oh, cool. And it's gonna help with the thickening of beef this roux. Soup. A beef I, roux. I love that. Beef roux. Oh, <laughs> yum. Yeah. I mean, I make a roux with butter and flour all the time. It's the foundations for any really great sauce. Right, so now imagine instead of butter, we're using beef fat. Oh! <laughs> it's totally healthy. It's a very, very healthy. But it's delicious! <laughs> it is delicious. <laughs> so once the flour is just incorporated just enough, we're gonna add our tomatoes, not tomatoes. And you don't have to squish these. Sometimes nope, they just squish it with we're going to puree it afterwards. We're going to oh, let it all great. cook, and then we're going to puree so it. So now I'm going to add in our chicken stock. Chicken stock. And we can use real chicken stock, none of this vegetable stock, because we're making a meat soup. Right. Sometimes if you have leftover chicken soup that you didn't finish off with Shabbos, so quite Fabulous. often I put up a big pot on Friday morning, and like a few hours before Shabbos, I'll scoop off like a couple of quarts of soup to have in the freezer. It's a great Just recipe. so I have some my homemade It's a broth. terrific thing to do. In fact, in the Chef's Garden cookbook, they do this great thing where they talk about a farm stock where you just take all of your scraps throughout the week and put it in a big pot, basically, right. and make a huge broth out of that. Okay, now what So now we're gonna add some bay leaf, and some time we're just gonna throw it in whole, and before we puree it later, we're gonna pull them out. Exactly, exactly. and now we're gonna add some salt and pepper. I'll do this, you do that. Get a good grind. Beautiful. We don't need that much salt because um, there's a lot of salt in the beef fry. So now we're going to add some cashew milk. and we, The whole thing? The whole thing. So Ooh. we choose cashew milk because we're replacing cream. 
And cashew milk is a really great replacement for cream. Its texture and consistency is much closer than, say, a soy milk or an almond milk. And it doesn't have a flavor that's going to interfere like, say, a coconut milk it's might It's more neutral. Right. Okay, I'm going to give that a mix. And then we're going to let this simmer for 30 minutes. Okay. Can't wait to see this all finished up. Excellent. So this has been simmering for 30 minutes. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take out the bay leaf and the thyme. There's a plate we can put it on. Yes. We don't want to puree up I'm going those. fishing in here. Yeah, go ahead, it's all good. Get, get all up and in there. Okay. Uh, don't take the bacon. Yeah, we, got, we need to leave the we good stuff behind. We need to leave the behind. beef fry in there. Leave the beef fry in there. And there's okay. one more sprig right there. And one okay. more bay leaf. Yes, let's not leave Mine just licked my fingers clean. It's mm. all good, enjoy. Oh my God, that's good. Okay, <laughs> and then all that's left to do is puree and season with salt and pepper if there's any that's needed. So let's get in there. That, look, that looks terrific, Georgiana. So we can blend it to whatever thickness you want. It can be super, super smooth, or if you want it a little bit chunky, it's really up to your personal preference. Oh, okay, I personally like very smooth soup. So one thing I learned about getting a soup really smooth is if you think you're done zhuzhing it and it's really smooth, give it another two minutes, yeah. it'll be even better. So Always. just give it that extra like zhuzh. Have you noticed that zhuzh has become like a part of the English dictionary? It's a real word now, I believe. Right. <laughs> totally. So zhuzh away. Okay, where are okay, we Okay, so to? now we just need to taste for any seasoning. Would you like to? I get to try? <laughs> Let me know. It's delicious. And that doesn't need to be added? Anything to a it? A little bit of salt. Go for it. Okay. And then you can taste have a bowl full. Mm. I love that bowl. I love the color contrast. Try to get your food to look as good as it tastes by using beautiful dishware. Let's put some microgreens. These are microgreens Ooh. from the chef's garden farm. I love that. If it's dairy, if you're making this dairy, you could use a little bit of cheese on top. You could serve it with a grilled cheese sandwich with a dollop of sour cream on top. Mm. Greek Better. yogurt if you want to be super healthy. Ish. I love, I love this with the meat. Okay. This is perfection. Super beefy, right? Mm. <laughs> it's a very beefy it's soup. It's a beefy tomato soup full of flavor. I love this. Oh my gosh. The smokiness, the meatiness, the heartiness with the tomatoes, the prettiness with the microgreens <laughs> on top. Like this is, I'm a big tomato person, so really everything tomatoes is just absolutely fantastic. It's a great hearty way to get tomatoes in the winter when we don't have all that fresh produce available. Well, I'm very excited to have this recipe. I hope everyone picks up a copy of Adama Treasures. Uh, they can go to maspia.org and... And they can get it there, maspia.org slash Farmer Lee Jones, and they can get the Adama Treasures, the Chef's Garden Cookbook, the produce. We've got it all available. Okay, fantastic. For recipes like this and more, go to kushi.com. What am I saying? <laughs> 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 Wasn't good? Okay.